They say this is a big rich town I just come from the poet's part What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Power After Hours, your favorite power podcast. This is season four, episode eight. It's done. I am Jeff J, joined by Chrissy Bree. Chrissy, what's going on? Hello, hello. That was very subdued, huh? That was that's your subdued. I'd I mean, hate to see you hype. I mean, I could be something else. I'm just trying to be cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I don't. But I'm gonna keep it cool. <laughs> I'm going to be quiet because you're getting on my nerve now. Yo. Oh, <laughs> man. No, nah, you know, I'm not even going to take it left. You're a mess. Um, yo, so we are two episodes away from the season finale. This episode this is came done. This quick. Yeah. It, it, always, it always goes by so fast. But this episode, them saying it's done, some things are done, but they're not finished. Mm-mm. You know, there's a lot, of, there's a lot that have been quote unquote tied up, but a whole new slew of problems yeah. have ar- arisen. So let's, let's let's get let's get right into all of the uh all of the uh fuck the drama. On. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say drama, but fuck resounded more uh poignant. <laughs> um, so first let let's talk let's talk about let's talk about Dre. Okay. Um you mean Kingpin? Like I, I'm trying to figure out like where when does he stop? What? I, I, just go ahead. I don't even know what to say about Jerry anymore. Andre Baelish. I, okay, Andre Baelish. He's playing so many different roles right now, and it's crazy because, in a way, it's kind of how we have seen Ghost operate in season one. Like, if you go back to season one and you look at all the roles Ghost was playing in terms of the drug life and the wanting to be normal and pursuing Angela and still trying to have a family at the same, like all these roles that goes play Dre is now doing the same thing, except it's just in one niche. So it's very, very interesting to me. I, I, again, like we have been saying for weeks, I don't know how he makes it out alive, but I will say he plays every role really, really well. It's almost scary. Good. Well, I figured out how he's surviving. He's deceiving everyone equally. Yeah. Yeah. The same dude who went and told all the Primeras that Tommy was going to go to war, and he sounded reluctant and wanted to just go. The boss says, we're going to go, we're going to go. At the same time, convincing Ghost to go speak to the Jimenez. And uh, talk to Tommy about it, which ended up with Ghost speaking to the Jimenez. And proposing the same offer but in the ghost business-like way because if you think about it that was a better way than just saying yo we want the land or else where he told the Jimenez everybody thinks you killed Lobos you strike fear if we tell them that it was us instead of y'all you're gonna lose your fear you're gonna lose your credibility so you might Mm -hmm. as well give us what we want that you gotta think of how audacious Dre is to set it up so that ghost would have that meeting only to come behind Ghost and meet behind everybody's back with the Jimenez, tell them that he can end their war without anybody getting hurt by delivering Tommy, get, taking Tommy's stuff over and working with them. Just by, and, and, you know, a lot of people have been asking about how the Bassets equate into this. Clearly he has some type of arrangement with them because he offered their yeah. hotels. Yeah. Which is a great deal if you're the Jimenez, right? You don't really want to bend the knee to ghost in them. But at the same time, you don't want a war like that either. So, no, because it's bad for business. Right. So Dre offering to dismantle Tommy's org from the inside and also work with them because he showed his ambition. We were wondering why somebody whose daughter was being threatened, who was a kid off the street, he's always had that ambition to be bigger in the game. Yeah. It's not too different from Tommy. Actually, not it's, it's one It's one and the same. When Ghost had him doing regular club stuff at, at the Glass season, when he pressed him, 
yo, when are we going to do some real shit? When, are we, when am I going to start getting in the real game? And Ghost was trying to mold him more like himself to be legit. But you haven't seen out. him get his hands dirty yet, though. That's right. the only thing. I'm right. still waiting. I mean, when we want to compare him to Tommy, yeah, I, they are, in the respect that you said, they are a lot alike, but Tommy is willing to kill. I don't know that Dre has that. I don't know that he has that type of will to kill any or need to kill anybody. I think he thinks he can talk his way out of things. And and as of, you know, as of late, that's all he's been doing. And I think that that's great and that works. But when the time comes, are you going to be able to pull that trigger? Because it is going to come. We know that. You're dealing with the Jimenez. They ain't no punks. You know what I mean? Like, you may be in a situation where it's either you or them. And, and what are you going to do there? Because he had plenty of opportunities where he could have took out um, he could have took out Kanan, but he didn't. Well, I would disagree in a sense of saying that he doesn't have the will to kill people because if he didn't, then Julio would still be alive. Well, that's true. He well, he doesn't have he, to get he doesn't have to do the killing that's to true. orchestrate the killing. That's true. He okay, orchestrated I, I Julio's murder, so he's willing to do whatever it takes in my mind to get to yeah. where he wants to go, no matter yeah. who's going to stop. And you think about it, he's following the ghost model to have mm-hmm. legitimacy and also this drug organization shrouded in secrecy where he has a dual personality. He has an alter ego where he's, he's Dre the, the drug dealer and Dre the community person. That's why this whole councilman Tate angle is getting interesting where he's bringing ghost and Dre in to help clean up the community quote unquote, so that they can develop. So Hmm. that's, that to me is going to be Dre's legit hustle along with the club and trying to get involved in the community. Because once he gets involved with that, if he takes over or has a, as the distro, he has a bigger hand and a bigger say in what goes down with the organization, it, he could be running game on both fronts, and that's what he's been doing. So It's strong. Right. I mean, that is a strong stance to have in the game. I'm not going to lie because you are playing – each person to your advantage. You know the weakness of each individual person because you have watched how they worked through the past few years. So he knows how to manipulate Ghost. He knows how to manipulate Tommy. And now he's learning how to manipulate the Jimenez. I I mean, I commend... What'd you say, Chrissy? Sorry, you timed out. You said you commend who? Oh, I said I commend how he's, you know, how he's doing things. I think it's really smart. I just hope that he can keep up with all of the lies that he's telling. You know, when you start telling a lot of lies and shit, it's hard to keep up and you slip up somewhere. And no, I Tom- don't know, Chrissy. Tell me. Okay. All right. Um, let me tell you something, Judge. You did not have to do that. You did not have to do that on this here podcast. Okay. My family listens to this podcast. All right. <laughs> Well, you the one detailing. Really ain't shit, man. Well, I really, I can't asking. stress that enough in this here lifetime. Listen, um, the only person that can judge you is your creator. All right? I'm just here to find out more information on how to lie better. So you tell me, you know, people slip up. And what else? I'm sorry. Let me tell you, Jeff, I really, <laughs> when, we, when we hit stop on the record button, y'all, uh, it's going to be real. I hope he keeps recording and uses it for outtakes. But... Anyway, <laughs> what I'm saying is like you can't it's at some point you slip up and my my feeling is is that the person you don't want to slip up in front of is going to be Tommy. Tommy, I think he put him in, you know, he put Dre in that position, but Tommy still doesn't trust him. You know that. Tommy doesn't trust anybody. So I feel like Tommy is always going to be watching him. While Dre may have one step up on him right now, um, Tommy's dealing with a lot of emotional shit and with the whole father thing, but it is going, Tommy's going to figure this out. I keep hoping he will figure this out. Um, I, I, I just keep praying about it. I don't know. Tommy's <laughs> when he's got shit going power. on in his head, you know, he doesn't really think right. So it's, everything is just working to Dre's advantage right now. Everything. You praying over some power. Lord, let don't let Tommy. Real L- Lord, Lord, don't let Tommy find out that man ain't his father. He gonna be crushed. There Lord. you go, Father God. Yeah. Please give him his father back in his life. <laughs> Look at your neighbor Lord, and say, neighbor. Lord, 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 Lord God. Tommy's been through a lot in his life, and he's going down the right path, Father God. And if he, 
<laughs> and if you strengthen his bond. Is that bond, your church voice? Because huh? that is actually really special. Is that your church voice? <laughs> that's that's my Baptist church voice. My Catholic church voice is, is a little bit It's very different. strong. I will say it's a very strong voice. I like it a lot. Thank, thank you. You know, as opposed to my regular voice, right? You know what? I'm going to fight you. Um, Last so, comment. Yeah, Tommy. Yeah. Tommy may distrust Dre, but he has his own issues. He he's trying Doesn't to he figure always... out. Uh, yeah, that's like saying the sky is blue with Tommy. Jeez, but uh, yeah, he's figuring out whether or not Teresi's his father, and I like the way that they did it this time yeah. around. Where you know the reveal to me, as I said last week, was pretty lackluster. How they revealed the whole dad thing when we knew for weeks, but diving deeper into it, I think they did a real better job. Where mm-hmm. he's he's pressing his mom, he's pressing his mom. That was about, a good scene about him, and you know, of course, the mom lies. Then he goes over to Teresi's. He goes looking for um homeboy. I can't remember his name. That was originally yeah. I can't remember his him. name either. I want to yeah. say Sal, but that's like wild. Mobster it's not Sal, but yeah, that's uh-huh. wild mobster stereotypical and shit. But um, terrible Sal, Sal or Sam or it's Sam. not Sal. I, that doesn't sound. I think it's two syllables. But go ahead. Right. But anyway, he's having a talk with her about how Teresi knows him, and he's just saying, "Yeah, you knew my mom," and blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Finds the picture of what ended up being him, a picture of him and Teresi in a in a family photo album. Confronts his mom. Mom blacks out. Uh, or mom, I should say, not blacks out, but she confesses, and that that actually, I think, was t- while Tommy was mad, that actually gave him something. Where he has a uh, he has a dad, he's going to learn learn from him or yeah. just learn more about him. But it must be ill in his mind that his dad, basically, without his dad being in his life, he still ended up on the same side of the street as his father. Yeah, which is insane how you don't even have to be with somebody to still end up being like that person in terms of parenting, you know, like that, that's just how genetics work. And I love that angle um, of it as well. I, I think that the whole Teresi thing, first of all, I'm trying to figure out why was that picture even in there? Why does the wife know about Tommy? Yeah, that was that was pretty funny. Like how why would he put a random picture of a kid? In, in the photo album. For right. Like, I'm like, wait a minute. Does the wife know that he had a kid out of, you know, uh, outside of their marriage? Like, what is the story there? I feel like we need more. more there needs to be more there because you don't just find a random picture of it. Why would a man that cheated on his wife, you know what I mean, with a stripper, put that picture in there? It's hella, hella reckless. So for me, that was like a gaping hole. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, who does? Right. So for me, what I what I thought oh. about what I thought about in that in that regard. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I was still talking, and you oh, just word? like it's like I wasn't talking. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Go oh, ahead. that's how I usually feel when you be. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, no, but you said it like you couldn't hear me. Yeah, because I was literally mid sentence, so right. that wouldn't have made sense. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it, your connection is timing in and out a little bit. So when you stopped, it mm-hmm. sounded like a natural stop. But um... let me try to unplug. Hold on. All right, all right. Hopefully that'll cut it out. Hopefully it's a little bit it's a little bit more lit than it's been before. Okay, okay, Jeffrey. but uh, but okay. yeah, like I I think, um, I think with with that right, it, she can't know that he has a kid, or mm-hmm. probably maybe she has suspicions, but I don't know if it's been confirmed because if you know when she first visited him, she was lamenting about the fact that she couldn't give him children. And he didn't oh. care. So if he, if she would have known that that was a love child or a, or a bastard or whatever, she would have probably flipped. And I don't think she would have allowed that in mm. the photo album. But then this, once again, is another, un, unless we get more information, a fill-in-the-blank for yourself type situation. Cause he yeah, what was a, a lie picture. that was told? Maybe the, she, maybe the guy that was there, like we, the one we can't remember his name, maybe this that was supposed to be his child or, you know right. what I mean? There was a lie. Maybe he said it was his nephew or something. Right. There has to be a reason that picture was in the photo album because it doesn't make sense. You're right. They don't. So that even makes me even more angry because I'm like, why would that picture just be sitting in a random ass photo album? For what? Right. Like, I don't know why why it would be, but then again, if you saw, if you ever watched The Sopranos or any other 
type of mobster show, you can see that these dudes kind of do their own thing. Right, and, that's and true. Do they want with impunity. So I, I wouldn't put it past them to have done something or just put it in there maybe years down the line or whatever because people ain't checking right. it. And just was, oh, this is, you know, this is Ronnie the Sticks kid. And I took a picture with him. You know, there's always somebody, somebody the whatever with their whatever their moniker is. So I, I wouldn't put it past them. But what's interesting about their their dynamic is now Tommy can hit him up and talk like rely on stuff and, and rely on him for things. Because when we get to talking about Sandoval, we're going to talk about how that all broke down. Oh, my the God. Fact that he was able to holla at him. To, to do that to do that job was 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 is pretty ill and he didn't want anything back so this goes back to um a few weeks ago where i proposed that maybe tommy has an inheritance somewhere where he could take mm-hmm. over the crime family and get even more mm-hmm. power it, it, it's it's ill to think where where they can go with that but right that's true i didn't even think yeah i mean Oh, I, I feel like this is just going to mess Tommy's head up even more. He's, you know, he all it takes is one little thing, you know, for the past season and a half, it was Holly. Um, we didn't, he didn't really get over that issue until what, like episode three of this season, right. maybe even four. So now with this, Tasha. yeah, now with this situation, it's like, well, damn, like, what are we, what are we going to be looking at here with Tommy, you know? I, I'm glad he's able to finally know the truth, uh, but I'm, I want to know what's up with, what is Kate going to do? You know what I mean? Like what, it, what is her game plan now? <laughs> so you see, she went there and threatened him and said, stay away she from did. my son because who it, it, you wonder why she wants him away. Is it exactly. more so that they, she, they left that he left when they, when he was younger, when Tommy was younger or, no, but you heard reason? what she told Tommy. She said, Something along the lines of whatever he whatever he says he can do, like it's the he. There's always something more to it. Like you can't. It's on the lines of basically you can't trust him. Mm -hmm. So be careful. And my fear is now with what Ghost had Tommy do, you know, with what he hired Teresi to do, is that now it puts Tommy in a really really messed up situation somewhere somehow. Well, you know, one thing is that. At least from the outside looking in, he can trust him. Because sure. you're going into how this whole Sandoval storyline has come to an end. Mm-hmm. What did you think about that whole situation with Angela Donovan and Sachs and how they set up that eventual wiretap to catch Mike? I think it was inevitable. I think the only person who really needed convincing was Sax. I don't think he really could believe that it was um, that it was Sandoval. So to have all of this unfold and to get all the proof, uh, his night, you know, his, him being so naive, he was able to finally say, "Yo, like this, this guy really wasn't who we thought he was. Everything that happened was because of the pieces that Sandoval put into place." So I like that they all teamed up together to get him. We didn't even see them meet with Mock to set you know, the wiretap up. We just know that Mock was there in the mid- middle of the wiretap as it's happening. Um, and at first, I really thought that Sandoval was too smart for it. I thought that he knew what was going on and he was not going to fall for it. Because um, when he started talking about how, you know, he'll let them know everything about Angela and all this and all that, I was like, okay, maybe he knows the wiretap's happening and he's throwing blame on, you know, and suspicion onto somebody else. But it ends up being that, like, he really had no clue he was going to kill Angela and I'm like are you that that just goes to show you how much he is was not that guy and they turned him into that guy he did not have a choice because they threatened his family and so that just makes me it made me a little bit sad to see that because he looked scared um like he had no way out he just wanted to live his life and make sure that his daughter was okay um so at that point I got a little bit sad for him um, I understood why he did everything that he, you know, had been going through the past season. Um, and I hate that it had to come to an end like that. He hasn't been thinking straight ever since the beginning of season three. Yeah. He hasn't been thinking straight because he's been under duress. And 
being and was compelled by Lobos to do all the things that he did for fear that he would lose his daughter. So I can understand why he wouldn't be woke, quote unquote, mm-hmm. to think to know that there would be a wiretap. Also, given the fact that Sax has always kept it a hundred, and he was the yeah. first person to say they should tank Angela for the case. Yep. He was the first person to say that because it made sense. That way they would have a clearer case. If she was collateral damage, so be it. She shouldn't have slept with a drug dealer and a federal agent and put herself in the middle. So him entrusting Sachs seemed like a logical move because Sachs has kept it the same way. He's he's maintained his demeanor in with all the dealings he's had with him. And he has no reason. He has nothing on Sandoval, at least to Sandoval's eyes. So him going to Angela's apartment... I just didn't know what he... To me, he was going to Angela's apartment to try to give her an out so he didn't have to kill her by trying to convince her. So once she started pulling out all those receipts, Receipts. she had all the receipts. I'm talking about coupons, receipts, vouchers. Yo, she had the redacted phone records. (laughs) Speaking of the federalities. She had the pictures walking away from Anibal Sanchez's apartment, him and Greg. She she basically broke down what happened. She was like, I think I, I think Greg got a call from the federales. You were there. You just like you come in here now and you killed him. And he broke down and on the wire yeah. broke down and just said, yo, you don't know what it's like. Blah, 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 blah. My, my, my kid is is being threatened. I got I had to do what what was necessary. And it was so smart of her that once he he started implicating her. Mm-hmm. She disconnects the wire so that if he said anything else crazy, she wouldn't be implicated. So smart. And you think about it, even that whole time when he told her to turn her back and he starts he starts telling his plan like a supervillain, like a classic supervillain. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to tell them that it was a struggle, that you 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 became, you were under duress, you were about to attack me and all that. And when she said, how are you going to do that? How are you going to convince them of that when you sh- by shooting me in the back? And I was like, Oh, she does have hmm. a point. She yeah. has a very good point there. That was there. A, great, a great misdirection to, to clap him. Let him know that he's on a wire right before they run in. Like, yo, you're on a wire, so you better cut a deal. You're cutting a deal is your best bet. Get out now. And, and, and you know, she was right. But then I also forgot about Sandoval knows a lot of shit. So him, yes, him he does. basically forcing Mock's hand for possible Im- immunity because he especially if you've been a fan of law and order, you know, those, mm-hmm. those dirty DAs, if you're convicted of a crime and you were involved in shady dealings with mafia or drug dealers or any way that you were dirty, anybody you convicted is going to claim that your, your testimony and your case was tainted because you were dirty too. Yep. So he said, I had 20 years. He had 20 years worth of cases that would get turned on his ear if he didn't get immunity. Crazy. Now, what I found interesting was, you know, in all this time, all the characters have gone into dark places. And I don't think Angela's ever been there. It's been more so following along and and going in in terms of love and in terms Mm -hmm. of feelings. But she broke bad this episode. Like, she really went into a dark place. It's it's ill. It. It's ill because when she told Proctor, I mean, when she told Silver that they caught Sandoval and that, um, you know, he's going to be he's going to testify and do all of that. And she was like, I don't think he's going to care, but you should tell Proctor, too. That was her way of sending notice to them that he was going to be in protective custody. And that led to his eventual death. I thought it was very smart when she did that, but I didn't even put two and two together as to why she was doing it. If the, I, I just thought she was being, you know, thorough and letting him know, like, tell your client he's good to go. Like, I didn't even put two and two together that everything that Sandoval knew, he knew who the real go. He know he knew everything. You know what I mean? Like he was privy to a lot of information because he dealt with Lobos and he he saw a lot of underhand things. He has access to a lot of information. And so when I realized that, you know, when they were talking, you know, Ghost and Tommy and uh, Proctor and they were saying, yo, he knows things like we've got to we've got to handle this. Like there's no if, ands or buts about it. And they were like, what are you going to do? Break back in, you know, <laughs> go, she's going to go back in right, the jail just right. to kill him. That's a little bit obvious. So when it comes to the point where he's like, can you trust Teresi? 
And Tommy goes, well, you know, he's kind of my father. So <laughs> I could ask and that's what we're going to do. And, um, you know, for Tommy to go and ask Teresa to take care of the situation, I thought was, was brilliant. I just did not expect Angela to basically, she set him up to die. And I thought that was, I just did not see that coming from a character like her who has looked down on everybody who did those type of things for the past few seasons now to all of a sudden turn into that dirty uh, character that we've never seen that side of her, you know, before. I mean, it came from a place of revenge from her mind. She wanted yeah, for Greg. for Greg and she knew that was the ultimate justice. So when she whispered in Spanish, that was for Greg. I was like, yeah. wow. Cause the minute they were talking about it, like, I don't know how this could happen. Nobody saw nothing. Um, nobody knew that he was in protective custody and Sack said, well, except us. That's when I was like, wow, she yeah. really did. She told them on, she didn't tell them just to say it's, it's good. Cause you know, I don't think they would have leaked out that information that they made that arrest until mm -hmm. he was ready and under surveillance and shit and ready to drop whatever dime he was going to drop. But the fact that that look when he was like, well, it was one of us. I said, wow, she, it's the same thing that happened with Lobos. It's the same exact situation with Lobos where he, he freaking, he, they told where he was. She told ghost and they, they, they ended up getting after him. So now I thought it was smart, right? So, so that, to me, it's very interesting to see Angela go down that road. It's also in interesting that Sax was the one that was there when he started talking about Angela and the wire went out, mm -hmm. and then Sandoval gets killed. So to me, Sax is going to have some unfinished business and probably will be the one that starts looking more into it and trying to see if Angela, trying to see if he could implicate Angela in Sandoval's death. Which is crazy because the last words we hear from Mock was, you know, <laughs> everything he knows is going to die with him. You mm -hmm. know, he he dies with Greg's death and, and, and everything, all of the information that could have implicated other people and, you know, probably given a lot of arrests to people inside of the, you know, of the government. He knew, he knew a lot, you know, a lot of dirty people that could have been arrested. And now everything dies with him. And I guess in a way it sets him free. I think that he's dealt with so much the past couple seasons and something that a normal person should not have to deal with when you're forced to turn into this evil person be to protect your family. I think in a way he was set free from a lot, a lot of things. And, and maybe he's at peace now, shit. I don't know. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll see. I, I don't think that he was. I don't think that Sandoval was a a, a villainous character. I just think that he was somebody who he was got forced to be in a bad situation and and kept making yeah. one mistake after another mistake after another. Where he got to mm -hmm. the point that it was just too much. Like that. That's was why just I said I felt bad for him when he started breaking down. I literally felt bad because you realize that it wasn't something that he. He wanted to be. He didn't want to be that person. He was forced to be that person. Yeah, he he definitely was, and uh, it's a shame how you go. But yo, know, shout out to Mike Fumero. He he did his he did his thing on this yeah. show for the last few seasons. He came in in the mock role, then slowly changed into a a, a, a murdering a murdering DA who had to play two mm -hmm. sides of a coin in order to get out. He almost got out. He almost got away with it's it. Close. But, you know, it karma caught up to him at the end. But you know, I think I think uh Fumero was a great actor for the show. He did his thing and it, as a as a character, I'll I'll definitely miss him. Yeah, yeah. He was dope. You know, I you know, somebody we we're losing some great characters this season, people that have played solid roles. So um it's unfortunate to see him go, but I know that they're they do a really good job in, in casting for power. So I'm sure they're gonna bring on just as you know, strong characters like, you know, maybe Tate. <laughs> Tate. I can't. I Councilman can't. Tate. Damn it. Put some respect on his name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They could have given him. I can't get over the fact that they named him Tate. So, yeah. But they always bring in strong characters. So, um, you know, sad to see him go. But I'm sure he has something lined up that's even better. Because people that have died on this show usually get something really, really good after. So, it's good. 
word. He's gonna be looking at his LinkedIn like it's lit. <laughs> Not LinkedIn. <laughs> but um, all right. So a few more things before we wrap up. Uh, Proctor and this mm. insurance policy mm. with the laptop. I knew he didn't throw it away. Something told not. me that he would hold it. Why do you think he's holding on to the laptop? He's holding on to the laptop to save his ass. He 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 knows that there's stuff on on said laptop that could probably um help what was it? I think Ghost. I think he's really more so loyal to Ghost than he is to Tommy, but there was remember he said that he thought that something could possibly be on the laptop that like another recording, he needed to know if there was something else that was there. Maybe when he looked into the laptop, he found something. We don't know what's on that laptop. This guy was a, in, he was a part of the federal government. It could be anything on that laptop. So who knows why he's keeping it? I'm sure it's to save his ass if anything does happen. The guy's computer was open when the um, murder took place, if I'm not mistaken. And anybody who's watched anything that has to do with tech shows knows that you can hack into a webcam. You know what I mean? If his computer was open. Right. So who knows what he's got on there? You don't know. He could have been recording and yeah. had it sent to a remote server. Yeah. Had it timed so that if he didn't check in within 24 hours, it was released somewhere. There's mm-hmm. so many things that you can do with technology to ensure that Information will get out even if something happens to you. He doesn't know what to think. So Proctor keeping this laptop, and I know it'll come up sooner or later because nothing is tied in a nice bow on power. But for him, he's playing a a, a dirty game by lying to Ghost and saying that there isn't any more laptop that he destroyed the evidence that he got Mm -hmm. rid of the body and did all that. So now I'm thinking, whoa, where's the body? Did you get That's rid of the, the scary body? part. Yeah. Where is the body? Like, I know he said he has people, but we didn't see anything after, you know, Tommy killed him and walked away. They didn't show us anything. The show did not give any further information as to what Proctor did. We didn't see anybody get cleaned up. We didn't see a body get taken out of the building if it was even taken out. We don't know anything. The only thing we know is that the last place that his cell phone dinged off of the last tower was right above Proctor's place, and right. it was the last place that he checked in. So I I think this the focus of uh, Bailey's death is going to maybe go more so into next season. I don't think that's something that's going to get handled right now, but I think a lot of the focus is going to be on Proctor and how he handles it. He seems to be strong because whenever Maka comes to him and approaches him about something, he is... He handles it really well, but they don't need Bailey anymore. Mock doesn't need Bailey. So that kind of takes the heat off of the situation a little bit. But like I said, he was a part of the government. Somebody's going to be looking for him somewhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how that all develops as we keep going on. Tommy's fucking crazy, man. You don't just kill people. I still can't believe he did that. Yeah, he's a mess. He's a complete Oy. mess, but Jesus. yeah. So other tidbits, uh, that little exchange between Silver and Ghost when Ghost finds Tasha's earring. I'm sure that'll pop by. Silver, Silver's a bold dude. He's a a real bold, brazen dude where he goes over to the house to tell them that dude got off and uh, that Sandoval got arrested and so he's not going to be implicated anymore. Mm -hmm. And he's kicking game to his wife right then and there. I, I like, dude is really bold. Extremely Do you think he should have gave the earring back? Well, if he did it, then we wouldn't have an opportunity to find out for Ghost to find the earrings together and remember. <laughs> I'm wondering, because Ghost is really, really smart, but he's also really, really oblivious to things that are happening right under his nose, which is crazy to me. Um, I don't, I, I didn't see anything in his face that said that he thought it was his wife's earring, you know, and he played it cool. I didn't get that from him. Some people said they thought that they did, and I didn't see it. But I think you could, I, I'm playing it from the stance of, What if he's in the bathroom and he sees that earring, you know, and he's like, yo, where's the other one? And if she didn't have it, he would know. But now that he gave the earring back, you know, it's it's can be played either way. But I think at some point he's going to see that earring again. You don't just bring that up if it's not going to come up in the future. Right. Right. Were those the same earrings that Holly stole? Holly took. I was wondering. I couldn't figure it out. God 
damn it, I couldn't figure it out. I feel like if it was, he would have known for sure. Right. Because remember, she said how important those earrings were to her. They were a gift from um, from Ghost. So I feel like he would have known if those were the earrings. Yeah, and I, yeah. I want to say that they were designed differently. I didn't get a chance They were to diamonds in the ones Holly took. Right. Holly's right. had right. diamonds. Right. So, yeah. But that would have been that would have been off the hook if those were the same. Crazy. Because he would def, he would have uh, to find those and for those to be the earrings. Uh, that would have been a nice little touch. I, I didn't go down go back and check for myself, but I feel like those earrings they were like stringy earrings instead of hoops. Yeah, something. I think they were a little bit different. Um, I can always go back and check, but I'm pretty sure those are not the same earrings. Um, I think that would have been too easy, you know, because then we w- he would have known about the affair already. I feel like this affair needs to go on for a while. I think it's going to go on to the point where Tasha even considers leaving Ghost for Silver. So it needs to go on for a while. And if he finds out right now, it kind of doesn't allow them to grow at all as a couple. Right. I agree. I, I agree. What else? Tariq had a reality check. Oh, my T- T- Tariq is Tariq is back home. Because he now, you see, that's what happens with a lot of kids who want to do hood rat Listen. things with their friends. The minute the hood rat things go down and push comes to shove or punch comes to shot, then mm. it gets too real and you want out. That whole scene where he, they, they did the stick up kid move, mm-hmm. it, it's so crazy because you think, all right, these dudes are just going to rob. He's like, all right, cool. I'll take off. They do this all the time, whatever. But it for me, when that scene was going down, he started hearing the woman like yeah. pleading and pleading. I said to myself, yo, are they about to rape her? That's like, what I kept nah. saying. I was like, nah, nah, nah. Then when he started walking up, I was like, damn. Yeah, it, it, it reminded me, it reminded, if anybody's seen uh, Beasts of No Nation, mm-hmm. it reminded me of that. Where yep. where them, them badass kids was going in, doing all that shit. And I, you know, I see it, and then him going, like the him going into the room screaming for brains to tell him to stop. That stupid costing costing homegirl her life. Yeah, I, I knew once he shouted out the real name, I said, "Why?" Yeah, because he said, "I wish it? you wouldn't have done that," and that's when I knew. I was like, "You never say the name. You never say the name." Even if you just I knew said, it. chill, and she knew too because she was like, "No, no, 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 no!" <laughs> right. Like she knew right. that that was going to be her end, and I, I just hated that for her, Tariq. It just, again, shows how immature and and stupid that he is. You know what I mean? Like, they've been drilling that into our head for weeks now, how dumb he is. And this was just another, like, icing on top of the cake. And I I hate he had to witness that. But at the same time, sometimes you got to see some real shit for you to get your head on straight. And I, I... this is not the end for him because they are going to come looking for him. We all know that. Like, you witnessed a murder. We got to make sure you're not about to say no shit. And he thinks telling his dad that he wants to go to, away to school with Raina is going to save him? Like, that's just, he's stupid. They're going to come for him. That school They're, sounding real good right about now. Last week, he was do. scoffing. This week, he's like, yo, Connecticut might be off the chain. I might have to go up there. <laughs> I gotta go, to go, yo. Connecticut might be a situation. I might have to. I do started that. talking Cleo when he went up. I said, "Oh mon dieu!" I said, "You <laughs> stupid! Get out of there! Just run!" So and, uh, Tariq might ran. be number like, one on the list that people want to go. Yeah, I mean, I never wish for a kid to die, but Tariq is mad close, bruh. You know, close. you know it's real when somebody says, "You know, I never want children to die," but <laughs> fuck Tariq. But- the butt comes and you're like, oh, wait a minute. Something's wrong with you. Yeah, it's bad. But Tariq is, I feel like he, like you always say, he's just a teenager. And I think a lot of times we forget that. And he's making a lot of mistakes. This may be the one thing that turns him back to being normal. And maybe it just, maybe he will start to understand why his father made the decisions that he made. I, I just hope this makes Tariq a little bit smarter. And he's going to end up needing his dad's help. We know that. So I'm just waiting for it to happen. Yeah, but it might be too little too late, unfortunately. Yeah. It might be too little too late. So yeah. we, got a, we got a podcast review. Oh. Uh, five stars, dope podcast from The Real And One. The only thing I look forward to more than these recaps are the actual episodes. Very thought-provoking and very funny recaps. So Real And One, Yo. you're, you're a real one. 
for leaving that. Okay, for leaving that, that was like the most lame comeback you could have made to his name. But that's that's good. That's good. See, if you're gonna wait to <laughs> slander me, you should wait on something good. That was I. She wait on something good, all right? Let's, let's see if there's anything. No, that was the that was the newest one. And as always, you guys can go Thank you, man. on That's iTunes great. under Nonstop Culture or the Power After Hours feed. Leave us a five star review and let us know what you think. So we we got two episodes left. It's a lot of things shaking. I'm trying Crazy. to think. Is, is there anything else you want to touch on before we got out of here? Nah, man. That's it. Like I I think that's what we got. I. I I'm wondering when they're going to bring back the Keisha and Tommy angle, but for now I'm going to let it slide because they kind of just fell that off, let that fall off, and I don't like that too much. But yeah, that's it. That's all I got. That's it. Okay. Let me see if we got any questions before we take off. Uh, I do find it funny. What I will say is when you, you just ask find it funny how? You just find it funny how? I what? do find it funny. I sent you a picture, um, like a little meme, and it was hilarious how they're saying the real ghost is the daughter that no one ever sees. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You just reminded me. I have to use that as the cover pick for what we posted on IG. <laughs> no one ever sees that little girl. She always comes from nowhere. When they did the interview, she was sitting next to ghost. And everyone was like, who's that little girl? Oh, the daughter that we never see. Like now the internet is calling her hashtag the real ghost. And I think that's that's hilarious. Yo, Yara Shahidi's gonna play her next season. <laughs> <laughs> Yara Shahidi or Amanda Stenberg are gonna play her next season. Yeah, gonna be like, I'll girl, be right you need to grow up. Remember when Zendaya? Uh, remember when? Uh, yeah, Zendaya is gonna play her <laughs> next season. You remember when? Little Nikki grew up to like age eight between episodes yes. of the Fresh Prince. That's yes. gonna be um Yasmeen St. Patrick. She's Everyone gonna be like, wait up. a minute, what? She's <laughs> gonna be Raina's age next season. <laughs> Raina beat on graduated high school, and this little girl is about to take her place. It's crazy. Like, how do we not? This girl is never in play. We never see her, yo. She better keep getting them checks, though. I'll tell you that much. Hey, I get your little checks, sis. You know, you yeah. stack up that college fund, get do do whatever it is you got to do because Poor Yasmin, little girl. Yasmin yeah. St. Patrick might be the only St. Patrick that I'm guaranteeing <laughs> makes it out of this series. Yeah, she's going to survive. <laughs> she's going to be the next kingpin. She's going to be the only one that makes it. Poor Yasmin. Right. Don't nobody. I mean, I forgot that was her name until you kept saying it. <laughs> well, we got we got a um we got a comment from from uh Marcia. What's going on, Marcia? Uh I hope you guys go in on the Proctor laptop thing because that is just crazy. No one saw that coming. You can't trust no one on power. It literally took me this last episode to see the sinister side of Dre and why everybody wanted him dead. Sidebar, with him showing up on the tape meeting, something smells fishy. Kind of felt bad when the truth came out as to Sandoval's motives, but Angela, what the heck was that all about unplugging her mic? My pearls were clutched this entire episode. Yeah, I, I I I'd say the same. I say the same. Crazy, we, we addressed on, everything she yeah, yeah, said. Yeah, but she, yeah. she she ran through the whole. She, did did yeah. we leak her the podcast before? She I know, right? I don't right. know. No, <laughs> she she touched on everything. Like the, I, I do think that Dre showing up to the tape meetings fishy, and I still don't know what Tate's real motive is. is he, I can't is he just figure a regular crooked politician, a politician who actually wants to do things, or does he yeah. have even another motive? Maybe he's another side of Stern. That's what I'm trying to figure out. But then Simon Stern doesn't want Ghost to do business with him. So that's what I'm, I don't know. I'm really torn on the type of person that he is. I want him to be a good guy that maybe can become corrupt. But because I feel like Ghost really wants to be free of that side of things, but it keeps getting drawn back in. So I'm wondering if this is going to be his angle of being the, businessman that's not affiliated with any type of drugs at all. I'm just interested to see how that works on, you know, in the future. But for her to not see the laptop thing coming, sis, what was you sipping during the episode? Because I think everybody saw that coming. Like, Proctor, you can't trust him. He's an attorney. You can't trust him. They lie all the time. They lie all day. At the same time, Proctor was keeping it 100 with them the whole time. So I, I, I had a feeling he was holding something. Yeah, something like he he had to be holding something because I would have held something or at least I would have yep. took the information and put it on a thumb drive somewhere, put it on the cloud somewhere just in case some shit goes down and I could hold it on. So him having the laptop, I wasn't shocked, but I was like, you motherfucker, you lied through your teeth. Yeah, I'm not mad yeah. at it, though. I'm not mad. At, I'm not mad. He's a lawyer. I'm not. <laughs> I am not mad at that at all. 
So yep. Uh, yeah, we got two. We got two episodes left. Still a lot of questions. Where's Kanan? Kanan's still out there lurking. Probably went. To he gonna the, show up next season. You money. know, with his burns got rid of. You know, I it's Kanan is he took his money and dipped, yo. Let me say that you, power fans are are hilarious on Twitter. So if you if you didn't see the news, a little tip before we dip. So Fifty Cent is saying that. Power uh, stars is accusing him of leaking the episodes on, onto the net. Like he said, your power stars thinks that I I leaked my own shit. And, it, and mm-hmm. then the, it, you know people uh, outlets tweeted out Fifty Cent, and I quote: "Stars thinks I leaked the power episodes." And of course, everybody quote tweeted it saying, "If they say whatever they say, he did. He did that shit. He did He's that shit. That fuck." <laughs> Yo, I saw that tweet. Like at least two or three different times, and I started screaming because that's the first thing I thought of. Yo, whatever he said, he did. He did that. He did that whatever shit. he said, he did. He did that shit. Man, he said that shit so many times, yo. That's perfect. Whoever was the first person to say that deserves a fucking award. That is like Twitter one hundred and one. They that went is super perfect. viral. I know they went super viral, but honestly, oh my god, yo, that it, that has to be the line of two thousand seventeen. Like that's <laughs> that did. that line is going to be the. Uh, you come for the king, you best not miss. Best not miss. That's going to be yes. Power's signature quote. That's going to be Power's signature quote. Whatever, whatever they said, they did. <laughs> they said he did, did that he shit. Did that shit. Guilty as fuck. <laughs> yeah, it, it is so applicable. Somebody said, yo, <laughs> imagine if we had that uh, different time uh, uh, where they said uh, uh, OJ kill, killed those people. Oh, my God. Um, that would have been gold. Uh, Bill Clinton. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yo, whatever they say he did, he did that shit. <laughs> he did that shit. He did that shit. Did that shit. <laughs> So, yo, I'm I'm telling you, it's it's hilarious. I love I love the power fans. I love the power community. Yes, I love y'all for checking out this podcast. Any any parting words? We see nah, me? man. Yeah, you know like, me. I don't never say nothing profound at the end. She'd be like, yeah. She'd be like, nah, man. She'd been saying nah, man, for three years. Nah, man. Nah, nah man. man. Then I'll be like, last second before you wrap it up, man. And another oh, but thing. Wait, before we go, no, they ain't no <laughs> but. Wait, you said nah, man. We out. We, we out. <laughs> no, nah, I'm that, good. Though, that for... that does it for another episode of Power After Hours. Nonstopculture.com slash subscribe for all your power podcast subscription needs at nonstop culture everywhere on social. You can catch me at Jeff J says Chrissy where they can catch you at Chrissy Bree. And if you have any questions, comments or concerns, you can email them to power podcast at nonstopculture.com or just hit us on Twitter. We'll collect all your quotes, your comments, your reactions. We'll read them on air. Five star review on iTunes. You already know. Check out our written recaps on hiphopwire.com. Shout out to them and I1 and all, the whole team, BHM Digital, everybody over there. Uh, you can read my reviews there and then listen to our more in depth podcast here on Power After Hours. So I think that's it. I think I covered every yes. single thing. Two more episodes to go. The penultimate episode is coming up on Sunday. Yo, Sunday is going to be a lot. Yeah, I, I, I got to just, I'm, is, is I don't know what to do. Lot. So, you know, we, we're both, we're Power fans and we're also Game of Thrones fans. I know. Sunday, this weekend is going to be stressful. Mm-hmm. Especially for me because this is SummerSlam weekend too. Because SummerSlam's on, I don't know. I'm going to have to clone myself and just watch it on. You better figure that shit out. I, I've been watching Power at 8 and then Game of Thrones at 9. So that's what I'm probably oh, going to do again. I just miss live tweeting with people. That's all. Right. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to figure it out at some point. What what we could do for the season finale? Because I feel like, yo, the next two Sundays are gonna be so stressful. I know it's because it's be so, so much stressful. happening in Game of Thrones too. Everybody's George. dying on both shows. Everybody I know. dead. Everybody dead. Everybody dead. Everybody. So Everybody. Who, who 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 knows? But yeah, it, it, it's fun and it's fun talking about it with with you all. Be sure keep getting those questions in. Be interactive. We'll answer all of them. And, and we got two more episodes to go, so I'm I'm excited. I'm I'm ready. You ready? Yes. You're you ready. know I'm ready. Let's go. You ready? You yeah. ready? Okay, <laughs> that is when I definitely sign off. Thank you so much. All right, guys, we'll talk to you later. Peace.